So there's a lot of complexity in how we operate and it's because we're working within a system that we are trying to change and, and shift. Foundry's central office is hosted by Providence Healthcare. The role of our team is really to support the initiative provincially. So early days is about structuring the governance, uh, engaging with each of the families, understanding the Foundry brand, developing a project plan, identifying a site, and then shifting towards over time, really focusing on service implementation and evaluation. We have a provincial evaluation program. We have a, a provincial data collection platform. So we do collect data in each of our centers. Centers. And there are research projects that are underway in, in many of our centres as well. Provincially, Foundry reports up to a governing council. It's made up of our partners who came to the table originally to launch the initiative provincially. So partners in ministries, including health, mental health and addictions, and children and families. We have the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research, St. Paul's Foundation, and the Graham Beck Foundation as well. Each individual Foundry centre is led by a local lead agency. They are legally the operator of the Foundry Centre in that community and they work in very close partnership with us and health authorities. They bring their local partners together in an advisory capacity. Part of the proof of concept phase, it's really taking the idea of, of Foundry and the integration of services and does it make an impact? Is this a model that we want to invest in in years to come? After the proof of concept, we have the integrated step care model and what it does, it provides a framework for communities and their service providers to come together and figure out what services exist in a community and really t it helps identify service gaps. The uniqueness of what we try to do at Foundry is, is really in helping existing services align themselves so that as a, as a system we can understand where a young person can best be supported when they have mental health or substance use issues. In order to successfully open a Foundry Centre, there's shifts and changes that need to happen at every level of that system, from, from the folks who are working frontline on the ground in the community, all the way out through policy at the ministry level. The relationship with Foundry Central Office has been supportive and, and close, I think, from the get-go. Uh, they emphasized uh, the role of the not-for-profit as a lead agency and that was very empowering in, in where it situated us within the community and within the proposal itself and within the work going forward. It's really as a partnership that allows to just reach out and have a question which I think that is very different than it is with a lot of funders. Like it's totally fine to be vulnerable and say this is not working for us or we don't know how to do this and there's so much knowledge because um, I mean regarding workflow they know what the other foundries are doing there's just so much learning that is being shared. We didn't necessarily feel like the FCO had to have all the answers, but that we were working together and it would be much more helpful for us and the community to know that there's not one answer or that there wasn't a magical answer, that in fact we were working through the answers. When communities come to us saying that they would like to do Foundry, usually they have identified one organization that is going to take the lead and is going to create the leadership tables and the governance structures that will support the work to happen. There's some key ingredients to getting a Foundry Center up and going, even though it's each so individual, depending on the community. It starts with a conversation and an agreement, and often it's already reinforcing the work that's being done at the community level, which is really nice. But really at the heart of it is bringing the youth and the families together, and then bringing a lot of the, the table of leadership. Here at Foundry Central Office, we are engaging the folks, the young people, the clients who are actually accessing the local centers to ensure that the services, the supports, and resources that they're accessing really meets their needs because it is really important to be able to meet young people where they're at. I have a provincial advisory group that I support called the Provincial Family Ambassadors. The idea behind that group is to bring representatives from each of the Foundry Centres who are sitting on PACs, parent advisory committees, to join this provincial Group. And so the idea is that we would hopefully have representation from each of the Foundry Centres locally so we could bring a provincial voice to what families are asking for and needing within centres. By collaboration, I am a part of um, helping to spread the voice of families throughout our province and helping those youth get the supports that they need. It's an open space 
and it's providing opportunities for young people and families to come alongside us and help us to build Foundry out. Engaging young people is so much more than just asking for an opinion. We have an opportunity to have young people lead the work that we do. Uh, eventually, I would really like to see young people take charge of some of the governance that we have. Foundry's Provincial Youth Advisory Committee really creates a space for young people to directly engage and participate with Foundry Central Office directly. Definitely a bunch of change makers and very strong youth advocates that Foundry is very fortunate to have.